Well, welcome this evening to our Friday night service. Divine Creator, we ask that the light of highest awareness fill the minds and hearts of those who are open to your light. We ask that they be assisted and strengthened in their resolve to achieve peace using peaceful means. May their minds, their hearts, and their actions reflect the divine will to good for all. Comfort, strengthen, and support those who are in a difficult situation in their mind, body, or spirit. Bring confidence to them that your divine hand is at work in their life. Amen. Welcome to our Friday evening service. This is uh, Reverend Mary Huber, pastor of the Community Chapel of Holistic Healing, a non-denominational spiritual fellowship begun in 1977 by Reverend Michelle Lusson, a mystic and channel for the multidimensional consciousness which she carried all of her life and gave us so much information from that. We are a, as I said, nonprofit, and we are located on the website at www.ccwh.com, which I will encourage you to go to, to look at some of the other offerings that we have as a community. We are dedicated to the light and to bring the light of higher awareness to the individuals and then to the global community for transformation. And this evening, uh, we always begin with our Faith, Hope, and Charity Affirmations. The Faith Affirmation. I believe in the spiritual existence of myself as a perfect image of the Divine Creator. In this reflection that is my physical embodiment, I have faith in the supreme guidance of my soul for my balance, needs, and opportunities. Outside of myself, there are also perfect images and nothing can delude my thinking otherwise. The Hope Affirmation, acknowledging my faith in the omnipresence of my divinity. I hope for realization, awareness, and acknowledgement of the existence of the great I am within myself. And the Charity Affirmation, in understanding faith and knowing hope, I pledge my actions, my desires, and my thoughts to the performances of myself in the physical planes of the earth, to honor, to love, and to enlighten all that is a reflection of the divine outside myself so that my perfection is image back to my creator. So help me God. Now this evening, our topic is well known to those people who are actually present on, the, um, on our program this evening. We do, as a community, have a project going uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to send light at 12 noon to the nation's capital. And we focus it on Washington, D.C., because it does represent the center of the government. But we know that the light will flow where it needs to go because we are just sending light. We are sending pure light without preconceived notions of what should or should not be done. Uh, whether we have any kind of predilection to have a side to take, we don't. We step aside from all of that because we want just the light to go there because spirit knows what is needed for our transformation, not just in this country, but all over the world. But we begin where we are in the United States. Um, I was going to start very differently, and I wanted to st- came upon suddenly this afternoon in an old um, reading that I had done, I had read maybe 40 years ago, and I had was aware of it, but I had quite forgotten where it was, what it actually said. 
And I want, there are two readings I'd like to, to do before we, I begin my talk. And the first one is the story of George Washington's vision, as was told by Anthony Sherman um, in the mid 1800s. Uh, he claimed that he was one of the young soldiers with Washington at Valley Forge. And this is what he remembers being what that happened then. He said, one day I remember it well, the chilly winds whistled through the leafless trees, through the sky, though the sky was cloudless and the sun shone brightly. He remained in his quarters, referring to George Washington, nearly all the afternoon. When he came out, I noticed his face was a shade pale than usual, and there seemed to be something on his mind more than the ordinary type of thing. So Washington turned and finally he said, I do not know whether it is owing to the anxiety of my mind or what, but this afternoon as I was sitting at this table engaged in preparing a dispatch, something seemed to disturb me. I looked up and I beheld something, something standing opposite me and it was a beautifully, uh, singularly beautiful female. So astonished was I that I had because I had given strict orders not to be disturbed, that it was some moments before I found my voice to inquire as to the cause of her presence. Second, a third, and even a fourth time, I repeated my question but received no answer from a mysterious stranger except a slight raising of her eyes. By this time, I began to feel strange sensation spreading over me, and... I would have risen, but the intense gaze of this being before me rendered me impossible to move. I essayed myself, I essayed once more to address her, but my tongue had become useless, even though, as though it had become paralyzed. A new influence, mysterious, irresistible, took possession, so all I could do was gaze steadily and blankly at my unknown visitor. Gradually, this atmosphere changed with great, became greatly luminous, and I now begin to feel as though I thought I was dying. I did not move, and because movement was impossible. I presently heard a voice saying, son of the Republic, look and learn. While at the same time, my visitor extended her arm eastward I now beheld a heavy white vapor at some distance rising fold upon fold. This gradually dissipated and I looked upon a strange scene. Before me lay spread out one vast plain, all the countries of the world, Europe, Asia, Africa, America. I saw rolling and tossing between Europe and America, the billows of the Atlantic and between Asia and America lay the Pacific. Son of the Republic, said the same stranger, look and learn. At that moment, I beheld a dark, shadowy being like an angel, standing or rather floating in midair between Europe and America, dipping water out of the ocean in the hollow of each hand. He sprinkled some upon America with his right hand, while his left hand, he cast some on Europe. Immediately, a cloud raised from these countries and joined in mid-ocean, for a while it remained stationary and then moved slowly westward until it enveloped America in its murky folds. Flashes of lightning gleamed through it at all intervals and I heard the smothered groans and cries of the American people. A second time the angel dipped water from the ocean and sprinkled it out as before. The dark cloud was then drawn back to the ocean in whose billowing waves it sank from view. A third time I heard the mysterious voice saying, Son of the Republic, look and listen and learn. I cast my eyes upon America and beheld villages and towns and cities springing up one after another until the whole land from the Atlantic to the Pacific was dotted with them. Again, I heard the mysterious voice say, Son of the Republic, the end of the century cometh, look and learn. At this, the dark, shadowy angel turned his face south, and from Africa I saw an ill-omened specter approach our land. It flitted slowly over every town and city of the latter, 
the inhabitants presently set themselves in battle array against each other. As I continued looking, I saw a bright angel on whose brow rested a crown of light on which was traced the word union. Hearing or bearing the American flag, which he placed between the divided nation and said, remember ye are brethren. Instantly, the inhabitants cast from them their weapons and became friends once more and united around the national standard. And again, I heard the mysterious voice saying, son of the Republic, look and learn. At this, the dark shadowy angel placed a trumpet to his mouth and blew three blasts and taking water from the ocean, he sprinkled it upon Europe, Asia and Africa. Then my eyes beheld a fearful scene. From each of these countries arose thick black clouds that were soon joined into one. And throughout this mass, there gleamed a dark red light by which I saw hordes of armed men who moving with the cloud marched by land and sailed by sea to America, which country was enveloped in the volume of cloud. And dimly I saw these vast armies devastate the whole country and burn the villages, towns, and cities that I beheld springing up. As my ears listened to the thundering of the cannon, slashing of the swords, and the shouts and cries of millions in mortal combat, I heard again the mysterious voice saying, Son of the Republic, look and learn. When the voice had ceased, the dark shadowy angel placed his trumpet once more to his mouth and blew it long and a fearful blast. Instantly a light as of a thousand suns shone down from above and pierced and broke into fragments the dark cloud which enveloped America. At the same moment, the angel upon whose head still shone the word union and who bore our national flag in one hand and a sword in the other descended from the heavens attended by legions of white spirits. These joined the inhabitants of America, who I perceived were well nigh overcome, but who immediately, taking courage again, closed up their broken ranks and renewed the battle. Again, amid the fearful noise of the conflict, I heard the voice saying, Son of the Republic, look and learn. As the voice ceased, the shadowy angel for the last time dipped water from the ocean and sprinkled upon America. Instantly, the dark cloud rolled back together with the armies it brought, leaving the inhabitants of the land victorious. Then once more, I beheld the villages, towns, and cities springing up where I had seen them before, while the bright angel planting the azure standard he had brought in the midst of them, cried with a loud voice, while the stars remain and the heavens send down dew upon the earth, so long shall the union last. And taking from his brow the crown on which was blazoned the word union, he placed it upon the standard while the people kneeling down said, Amen. The scene instantly began to fade, and I saw nothing but the rising, curling vapor I had first beheld, and that also was disappearing. I found myself gazing again upon the mysterious visitor, who in the same voice I had heard before said, Son of the Republic, what you have seen is thus interpreted. Three great pearls pearls will come upon the, the Republic. The most fearful is the third, passing which the whole world united shall not prevail against her. Let every child of the Republic learn to live for his God, his land, and union. With these words, the vision vanished, and I started from my seat and felt I had seen a vision where I had been shown the birth, progress, and destiny of the United States. Now, St. Germain 
has given us visions of America as well. He's the standard bearer for freedom and has been so for thousands of years. And he is now the, I guess we'll call him the hierophant of the next, of the coming of this 2000 years that has just begun because he does bear the energy of freedom and his twin flame Portia bears the energy of justice. And of course, Quan Yin walks with justice. So there is always mercy. But two centuries ago, the goddess of liberty was the one who gave the vision to George Washington, according to this uh, report from, uh, I think it was from um, Summit University. And although we are, we are, many people are familiar with it. And once you remember what those words mean, and it, you are also to remember that these are testings of those who would become both the bodhisattvas and the Buddhas. If you want to make that uh, leap in, in your spiritual development. And we see the three episodes in American, America's history foretold in George Washington's vision as the opportunity to balance the karma of the misuse of the threefold flame and to restore the destiny and path of our personal Christhood and America's Christhood. Then in 1988, um, I don't know how long after that reading, um, the reading was uh, from Archangel Zadkiel. Archangel Zadkiel is known to be the most, um, I guess, a teacher, superb uh, teacher from the angelic realms. Um, and he dictated through Elizabeth Clare Prophet. And he said, therefore, a people of light worldwide is called to bring in the great golden age of Aquarius. This beloved can be accomplished in this hour only if millions rally to that living flame, to the pillar of fire in the midst of Israel, to the holy city, four square, which was established upon this continent. Know then that the choice is yet in the realm of the possible for light bearers of all nations to rise up to the call of light, to summon Archangel Michael, to enjoin with them and to be enjoined also by hosts of light that come from cosmic spheres for the delivery of this planet. It says, and he continues, blessed hearts, this vision must be fulfilled by those in embodiment. You who have heard and seen and felt the light and the ministration of angels in your midst, know then, beloved, that your capacity to contain light is infinite, even as you are the issue of the infinite God. I remind you of your ancient calling to deliver souls and to deliver them unto the Lord and their God flame blazing upon their heart's altars. I remind you then of the necessity for the res rescue of souls in this hour in the name of the Divine Mother Mary, who does come to nourish the Christ flame in everyone. And I remind you that the scene of the violet flame covering the land is one that you can, that can be, this, this is going to what is going to accomplish this for you. Because if it doesn't accomplish it, you will find that it is the destiny to go through the third phase seen by Washington. I'll just shortcut it there. So and he ends it with, you will see then that the only deliverance that can come to a people if you're unprepared to do this work, do this light work, would be the end result that was seen by Washington. So I know now that there are millions, since this was delivered in 98, that's decades ago, that people have been responding to the light all over the world, and that they have made their mark in understanding that the light needs to be returned to earth in great amounts and that we need to make this transformation period happen, that we are 
what we call the boots on the ground, that we have to work with the divine above because we are the divine below, empowered by God to be here. So this is the important mes- message that I think I'm just reminding myself of earlier. And I'd like to bring this out again because it's still, the wording might be an- antiquated and there might be a few things around it that you know isn't been progressed into now. But as I said, we have. We have made progress, but we haven't reached the end yet. We need to remember all of that as we are going forward that we need to continue. So for that reason, we have our Monday, Wednesday, and Fighter group doing our noon sending of light to the government of the United States because the city four square, as the angel said, was established here in the United States. Michelle always said the United States is the hope of the world. This is where freedom was planted. We must pay attention to this country and the country's need and the country's balance and all that goes into that. So as we maintain our own center of light, as we can stay away from the fray, because the fray is what the dark side is bringing in, all of the, the lies, the half-truths, the, the come-ons that go into bringing people into a very different place than they would be if they had kept their mind about them if they had kept their center in them. But it appeals to the lowest common, I guess, sense in people to want to be taken care of and to be given free things. And then in that case, you don't have to work and you don't have to do anything, but you're fearful. You don't know where everything is going. And these are the people that are subject, as Michelle said in her, um, the message that we have on our website. These are the the dark side wants us to go into things like alcohol and drugs to numb everything and we forget who we are. And those people who have been pulled down into that are people that yet have to be either come out of it and or somehow brought into an alignment with spirit within them. But it is their responsibility to do it. But it is our responsibility as light workers to hold the light and to emanate the light and to help where we can to bring the light of understanding and higher awareness out from us to wherever we can bring it. So that energy of thought, the energy of creation, the energy of positive uh, affirmations, the energy of the positive uh, ability for us to view life in a very different plane. There are those who are very depressed in the world because they don't see the light. They don't see the beauty in the world. They see them, their life as being a very different place than they are actually in. They have bought into that and they, the, the mind has clouded over. So as we put out our light, as we put out our information, as we put out our prayers, as we put out our meditations and sending light, we are part of the team sent to bridge from all of that into the new world of the Christ consciousness. We, we all know that ourselves, and I'm hoping those who come to possibly listen to this uh, on later on who do not know us, who might come upon this, will understand that life is meant to be lived in the best possible way that you can to be creative, to be expressing your creativity, to be positive, and to be interacting in life in in such a way that you're bringing to yourself and others the joy and and the fruitfulness of life out. So as we go about our life, everyone has got to grab hold of the need for forgiveness. If there's not one thing in the world that is that I, I guess the best element that would possibly start everything rolling is if people could see to forgive themselves and one another. There is such reflexive, uh, I don't know, behaviors that go with people dipping into the past and sometimes very deep past and blaming everything on either that or the present people who they say have caused that. Well, they're They're part of the cause. They don't see their own responsibility in it. They don't see that that 
we are here today as a result of that past. We are here today with a, the knowledge that we have gained along the way to not do those things again, those who are awake and alive and alert and are in the light. We are here to do better than that in the past. And it, bl it does nothing to blame anyone for anything. As a matter of fact, that judgment call that they're putting out there is, you know, <laughs> calling upon themselves. Judge not lest they be judged. This, this is calling upon them that thing that they are complaining about. They're going to get more of it. And it just has to get through to them if they're going to get through it all. But it is not our responsibility to change another person. That person has to have all of the material for that you can provide. But it is up to them to do their own change. We have to exercise our spiritual muscle all the time in order to gain in our ability to um, advance spiritually. You must keep pushing. You know, if some of you have been given a challenge, you have to take the challenge on and do the best you can with it and try to solve it or overcome it in, in the best way you can. Your effort at even attempting that is a reward, is, is something that you do gain from whether you actually can do the actual solving. It isn't the point. The point is that you are doing the best you can at the moment. And if this is not good enough, then this is where we all fill in and try to help people, especially those we see are struggling and want to go forward. So that spiritual muscle has to be exercised. And we are getting really big muscles today from all of this exercise we're getting right now. Uh, the world goes into two camps, really. And Michelle had taught that oh, from the very beginning. I can't, that's one of the earlier classes she taught. The world has been thrown into uh, what she called a thyroid pancreas imbalance. The thyroid is all about will and power and decisions and all of that. The thyroid out of balance is the one who needs to be completely in control. And these are the, the people who are the, the, the leaders who are unforgiving in their evaluation of what's to be done for the people. They take complete control over everything. This is that need for power is a terrible affliction that has permeated so much of society in there, especially those who have a lot going in. They have developed a lot of money and they have developed a lot of power and they want their will to be done all the time. The, th the pancreas side are the people who have insecurities, basically. That's what the pancreas kind of represents in the spiritual stem uh, in its negative form. So when you have somebody who wants to dominate you and you have a bunch of people who are insecure, it's a perfect match, but it's also the thing that will not last because there at some point, this whole system will fall down. And though that very imbalance is what Michelle said has pulled down civilizations throughout time, nations upon nations, it pulled down Atlantis the need for the greed and the power and those who would not meet that and say, no, we're not doing that. People fell down on that end of the thyroid pancreas and everything crashed. We cannot afford to, un to I guess, ignore that. I, it's still rampant in the world and I think it's ever less the world and we need to be quite aware of that imbalance in the world that we are in that we stay centered and balanced ourselves that we stay in strong in the light and if you don't have anyone you think you are affecting or teaching or helping recognize that your life that you're emanating is extremely important to the light beings who are able to use your light that you are emanating, you are a grounding, I guess a lightning rod for them to come through. You are helping the planet, you are helping the people around you, even though you might not know it. So staying true to your understanding of what your balance is and what your, where your values, where your center is of your higher understanding 
what what do you hold as your standard? What do you hold as your ideal? That's what Casey always said. Know what, bring in your ideal and live it. This is important that we do it ourselves and teach it. Then, of course, as you're doing it, you are teaching it. And we are always asked to grow where we are planted. Our soul has placed us where we're supposed to be in the world when we came in to be in, in the embodiment. It met all the requirements that the soul needed in order to gain in this lifetime what it needed as an individual to gain. So we can't judge anyone else's situation. We only know that people were placed where they were, where their soul wanted them to be. They're in the family, they're in all of the situations. Those are the challenges they were meant to overcome. How they're doing it and all of that, that's up to that individual. We must grow where you're planted so that you're shedding the light where you are, that you're doing the job you came here to do, that you are fulfilling the mission, and that you are contributing to the harmony and understanding and goodwill in the world. Now, the goddess of liberty, who appeared before um, George Washington, has her image that she um, inspired to have been built as the washing as the uh, excuse me as a statue of liberty that was done by the goddess of liberty working with those in the physical plane to make sure that this was standing here in the united states where liberty is to be was born and it's here to stay and that goddess of liberty still holds that position that we have many gods and goddesses who are involved in, in great beings of light who are here focusing on the United States to help us. And it's very important to know that. When the electronic presence of someone, um, when you go to spirit, well, actually when we're still here, uh, you have to go to spirit for this, your presence has a certain frequency. It's the frequency that you carry and you'll carry in, in when you go into the the next world into spirit you have a certain frequency and those who have a great um, spiritual growth expansion within them have a greater field that they're able to cover with this electronic frequency that will spread out so when you ask you know how many millions of people are at any time praying to one saint or you know to to some to the goddess or whatever they're, they're doing millions how can that goddess or god um or saint respond it's because of they are responding with their electronic presence they have the capacity to do that and they come to you immediately they are electronic you call them in their electronic presence is there they are there their electronic presence is there now the goddess of liberty has put her electronic presence in the, in the statue of liberty and the goddess of freedom is her electronic presence is at the capitol building at the, the statue at the top of the capitol building holds the electronic presence of the goddess of freedom has been there from the time it was designed because she was the one who decided help them decide to put that up there. And there is another goddess, and I can't remember which one this is, who has established themselves and has brought the flame of liberty um, and placed it in the Washington Monument. The monument itself is like a beacon, is, a, is an active spiritual presence there that is exuding the, the freedom flame from it. And it has the statues, when they have this significance, have much more um, power to stimulate in people because that frequency, people pick up, we pick up frequencies from other people all the time. This can help without people even knowing it. But when you know it and you can energize this, it becomes even a bigger presence. So it's not just a statue. It is the electronic presence that is residing there. 
of this God or goddess and the, and the a flame of freedom that does, does live here. Um, when I, I think I shared this with a number of people present here, um, I get these little messages that come to me through music, usually, and uh, very, very frequently since we've begun this, this project, um, Sending Light to the Nation's Capital, I still hear the Marine Band playing Semper Fialis, F F Semper Fidelis, it is. It's always faithful. And always faithful is what we're being asked to do, to be as light beings, as light workers here. So, if, you know, if you hear the Marine Band play it or a Sousa March with Semper Fidelis, remember that this is for us. The people who are here, look much like Marines, landing on the beach, put it, planting the light here, and all the millions who are doing this, much, much like that. And we are marching to that tune every day when we do our light work. So I thank you very much for coming to this um, evening service. I'd like to move now on to... Um, our period where we're going to do some meditation. And this evening, what I really want to engage you with is Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael, his twin flame is Lady Faith. Archangel Michael is a great, powerful being. Uh, I think Archangel Michael um, uh, is known to be a, a, an exact, a perfect image of God. And that big, huge, powerful energy that he cover that he he possesses, is very much involved with love, and power, and the, all that has to do with great faith. So the faith that is needed by the people in this country who are in the pancreas realm, who need to be able to rise to themselves, people who have that tendency to have that weakness in the pancreas and there are many of us you know we we flow you know we all have some weak or some vulnerability in us but those who are behaving more like that do need more faith so that they can overcome their insecurities so archangel michael is a very important archangel to bring into your meditations so uh, we'll just envision now, as you are seated there and taking some deep breaths again to disengage from other things that might be going on in your life, so you can bring yourself now into the presence of your divinity within you, this inner world of the, such joy and peace and calm and beauty that you are now sinking into because you are relaxing enough to let it go. You're seated very firmly with your feet on the ground. You're very grounded. And as you're each in breath, you're bringing in light from the universe and it's centering you and it's bringing you this lovely sense of togetherness within yourself. It's a beautiful thing that happens right before meditation. You become this centered and grounded and secured individual. Now you're seated in the light, the light of your own divinity that surrounds you. It's omnipresent. And that angel that is there constantly is now wrapping very palpably, very, you know, you can almost feel the wings, the, if we're going to call them wings, with the electronic energy that they surround you with, that feel like wings because it's soft, it's securing. And now this angelic being would like to take you in your inner world and take you on the journey to your heart. You must visit your heart center. 
the center where the will of God and the love of God and the power of God, all of the divine attributes exist on the altar of your very center of your heart flame. Love, wisdom, and power. The place where the silver cord is connected to your entire being and the other end of course is your I am presence and you go to this heart this beautiful place always imagine your heart in a beautiful setting surrounding build it up each time you go there so that it becomes more and more beautiful feel the presence of other angelic beings with you because they are drawn to your loving heart there you will meet them and you take that now and they take you now out of this beautiful place into an even more elevated and beautiful place it's more like a door that you go through it's more lateral because your heart the center of your being is the center of the heart of everyone's being so you exit by a door and you go into an archangel chamber sign above the door archangels live here and inside of that door is a vast place and you ask for Archangel Michael who immediately immediately comes forward and you see his great stature towering high above you and the great strength he possesses and the beauty of his entire continents and of course always with the sword the sword that cuts the binds everything that binds us can be cut with this sword of truth the sword of light and you see that it's there and you he asks you why what can i do for you today What can I do for you today? And there are some things within each of us that are still not quite where we want them. They are being held back or tied down or tied up by something. And it would be good for them to be released, freed to be used or freed to be thrown out but one way or another freed from any of those burdens which are keeping us from being the true light bearer in this world and Michael is there to show you and travels with you to show you the beauty of your own being you're in your cosmic world of yourself we all go there to our within world our own world and how wonderful it is and how much we have grown through time all of our being has been nothing but growing gathering more and more light and more understanding and more love and we cherish everything that we see and there's always room for more and more expansion in this thing then we will learn new new ways to be new ways to express love new ways to be even free in the light and the sharing of that light we are in the beautiful world of our inner being 
filled with the great light of the universe and the cosmic beings we can meet there. And Michael has you well in hand, very, very strongly in hand. So you feel very confident, very assured, and very loved. And you see the sword being wielded in front of you, preparing the way to remove the obstacles. And it flashes here, it flashes there. And in its place, there is a beautiful flower, a beautiful tree, something is growing there. Wherever the sword has landed, something beautiful grows because restrictions that we have self-imposed are gone. We've gone well into the light of our being and there we meet many other light beings. They can only join us very intimately when we are in a positive, loving, state of our own mind and emotions, everything that is aligned with beauty and light and truth and love will draw those beings to us very, very closely. And we bring so many with us. And we know the light of that world is with us all the time. It is ours. And we have infinite capacity for light. Remember that. The beauty of your being the beauty of everything surrounding you needs to come back with you and I'm emanating from you in such a way that you are such a beacon. I mean, increasing your light, increasing it every day to be the beacon for others, to be the light in the world that will dispel the darkness And Michael then can bring you back. And we always, with, he's always uh, by your side if you want him to be, and always at your call. And as you begin to gather your energies and bring back those bundles and bundles of light with you, you bring back a lot of healing a lot of securing, a lot more faith. Faith in the world that God is in charge of this world and will be as was promised. And we are helping. And we begin our journey back. And you come back where you started, to your heart. Go out to the door that leads into that beautiful, large, vast place that you are in your heart. And there is an altar where the silver cord is connected. And you kneel before the altar and thank God for your life, for your ability to be part of light and the light workers and your commitment to do more and more. More prayers, more meditation, more centering. And you get up now, you arise to your feet. 
and those who are accompanying you every day from the light realms will accompany you back to the present moment where you are in your seat at home. I'll help you re-enter. And I'd like you to just imagine all of the bundles and bundles of light you're bringing back. You're going to use those in your everyday life for practical purposes, helping your intuition, helping you make decisions, helping all of this. Bundles and bundles come with you. And you feel the strength that you have gained and the healing that has resulted when freedom is present. And when you're ready, Thank you for coming and being part of the meditation. I'd like to remind you that we have a PayPal button on our website. If you would consider going there and donating something for promoting our efforts, it's a way of your sharing your energy as well as us receiving your energy and the Kind of a physical form, but it is an affirmation of your connection here and uh, really does help us. We appreciate that. And um, when you can, we would enjoy. I hope you will go to the website. Um, I think uh, we've been told we have a particularly lovely website that is very clean and very easy to, uh, to, be, to look at. I had that given to me by a, uh, somebody who does website developments, and they really loved our website. So please enjoy it and um, come back when you can to it and see what you can find there. Hopefully we'll have something new each time. And now we will end with our closing hymn, really, Let There Be Peace on Earth. And if you think of it, we could bring us all into alignment by etherically joining hands and singing it from your home while you're on mute. Okay, thank you. <laughs> 